Hello and welcome to the 10th video in this beginner series programming a tile tutorial game on the iPad using Cocoa Studio and iOS. So the last video we finished off with this screen with our application and that was the tiles actually printing more or less centrally on the board and now we need to start thinking about how we're actually going to implement the game. And the way the game we played of course is the user will swipe on a tile and if the space next to the tile is empty then the tile will move to that empty space. The problem we've got to solve though is how do we know that this space is empty? Because the tiles aren't occupying one pixel, they're occupying hundreds of pixels. So we have to find some way, without it being very complicated, of saying yes, it can move into an empty space. And an easy way to do that is actually using another array that is of 25 squares and is a grid representing each of the tiles. So if I bring in another little diagram from Inkscape, so a schematic, you could imagine that the tiles are laid out like this and you remember if I go back to the initialization function in our gameplay layer that we loop from 0 up to 23 and then we use i plus 1 to actually get the tile image name so we go tile 1, tile 2 etc as i goes 0, 1, 2 etc. Well if I go back to Inkscape here it means the tiles tile 1 PNG is this tile here at 0 and tile 2 PNG is this tile here at 1 and so on. So we, what we can do is we can make an array of 25 integers and at each slot in that array we store the number of the tile in that position. So in the starting position of the board the numbers will be in the array exactly like this up to 23 and then we can say that 24 represents an empty square or no tile. And this actually works out quite well because we can very easily using our coordinate conversion because we know exactly where the anchor point of each tile is and which column and row it's on. So if the user say touches tile 19 here, we can then go into our 25 square or 25 integer array and say okay at, we're at index 19, what number is stored at index 24? And if that number is 24, we know it's empty and we know this tile can then move to 24. So to make the example a little bit easier to understand, let's say some things have been shuffled around a little bit in this way on the tile the game and the empty square is here and let's move this one and this one the other way as well. So the user's moved a few tiles around and we've achieved this position and now they touch the, the, the tile at this index. Now this index is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. That's index 8 in the array. So we would ask what is at index 8 and the value return would be a 3. Well, it's not a 24 so we know it's a tile. And if they then swipe upwards we would say OK, what value is sitting at this index in the array which is index 13? Well, the value return will be 24, which we know is the empty square, so we can say yes, that move can be made. So we would then at index 13 store the value 3, and at index 8 store the value 24, and so on. So it provides this kind of mapping a very easy way to detect whether a move is possible or not on the board for, for the user. So that's what we're going to start implementing in this video then. So the first thing you need to go is to go to game player gameplay layer.h and we're just going to define inside here with our other couple of definitions here our array and we're going to call it board oc so board occupation with the 25 integers and save that then I'm going to go into gameplay layer.m and at the top of gameplay layer I'm going to type another constant definition and so like using constants and I'm going to put a little k here and I'm going to call that k empty so this is our empty square definition which has the number 24 as I explained with the schematic with Inkscape just now and now that's all remained all that remains is simply to initialize this array exactly in the starting format that we had here if I just do some undo's here and reset everything to where it was we need to initialize our 25 array that it has the numbers in this sequence. Well, as it turns out, that's exactly the same sequence as we have with the I loop here. So down the bottom of this array, we can simply say that board occupants at I 
equals a. And then the last thing we need to do is once this loop is finished, because of course we're only looping through 24 and not 25 here, we can say that the board occupants at the last square, 24, equals then k empty in this way. And that's our board now set up exactly in the starting position as we had in Inkscape. And the other thing, I'd, other thing I'd like to do quickly is make a print board function now so that we can actually print the board to screen. And I'm going to, it's very simple, so I'm just going to copy and drop this in to save a bit of time in the video. But it looks like this. And all it's saying is, is log board, and then we're starting at the top rank, so rank 4, and going down to rank 0, and then printing the numbers in file order. So we're going the rank times 5, plus 1, plus 2, plus 3, plus 4, which simply, if I get Inkscape back up, prints starting here, going to this tile, this tile, this tile, this tile, dropping down a rank, and so on. And prints simply the number values so that we can check the status of the board. So I'll just save that, and then go down to the bottom here, and just before we return self, let's call print board just so we can see in the console how that is then looking. Okay, so print board is now written. I'll drag the console up a little bit higher so we can actually see it. Go back into the iOS simulator and stop the current application. And now I'll go back into Xcode and click run. So the application starts up. And now down in the bottom of the console here, you can see below the tile output data, you can see that our board has been printed out to the screen with the number of the tile that's also sitting there. And the tile 24, obviously, is our empty square. And we'll be using this board printout then when we start actually sliding tiles around on the board and detecting whether we have a, a legal slide or not. So that's it for this video. Programming continues in the next one. Comments, questions, criticisms, welcome as always on YouTube.